With sunshine for most of the year, Southern California is best known for its beach lifestyle. But where the sun really shines is in California's deserts. It's a near perfect climate for solar energy generation. California definitely has very high potential for solar energy, simply because we have a lot of sunshine. And then if you look at the solar intensity in Southern California, it's probably one of the highest in the entire country. And California doesn't just have a good meteorological climate, it has a favorable political climate too. In 2006, the state's solar energy was given a boost by a requirement that by 2020, electricity providers must get a quarter of their energy from renewable sources. Soon that number could increase to 33%. The push has made it easier for solar tech companies to raise cash. To date, eSolar has raised $170 million in capital. That's from a combination of sources, including venture backing, but more recently, our customers and strategic partners have also made investments. We did a $140 million uh, B round raise, is what they called it, in, in September of 2008, um, that really fully funds our, our technology advancement and our project development activities through 2011. Both these Los Angeles-based companies are developing one of the hottest solar technologies around, Concentrated Solar Power, or CSP. This next generation of solar technology uses thousands of mirrors called heliostats to reflect the sunlight to the top of a giant tower. Sophisticated software allows the heliostats to track the sunlight as it moves. You might not be able to hear this, but there's a faint pulsating sound as these panels all move together about a degree a minute following the sun. They're just ordinary mirrors, but line them all up and they reflect the power of 10,000 suns. Unlike photovoltaic technology, the power does not come from the panels themselves. The reflected light boils a liquid to create high energy steam, which then powers a traditional steam turbine to generate electricity just the way coal or gas would. And while the average coal-fired power plant in the US can generate almost 700 megawatts of electricity, it would take 14 of these towers and 200,000 mirrors to produce just 46 megawatts. This e-solar power plant is the only commercially operating CSP facility in North America, but it's a precise model for more. Rather than custom designing future sites, e-solar plans to keep costs down by building the same thing over and over again. We use a template design. This keeps our overall system costs very low. The more we build, the cheaper everything gets. By avoiding custom design power plants, uh, we can tap into very, very large economies of scale in our manufacturing and supply chain. So this is more like building a wind turbine farm than it is uh, a large scale power plant. But these new solar towers still haven't solved one of the major drawbacks of solar energy. When you lose the sun behind cloud or at night, you lose the energy. So far, there's been no way of storing solar power, until now. Another Southern California company, Solar Reserve, is also developing concentrated solar power. But what sets it apart is its potential to provide solar energy on demand. And the secret to that is salt. The Solar Reserve technology is what we refer to as a molten salt power tower. If you use water in your cycle, water goes up to the top of the tower, similar looking tower, um, and, it, and it's heated up into steam. That steam then comes down the tower and, and really immediately it needs to be put through a steam turbine to generate electricity. So it's, it's kind of a real-time uh, solar energy production. The difference that with us is that we, can, we pump our molten salt to the top of the tower, it's heated up to 1,000 degrees, we can put it in a tank and store it and use it whenever we want. The technology was developed by Rocketdyne, the same company responsible for the engines used in the space program and the solar power system that runs the space station. The company has yet to build any facilities, but when they do, it's unlikely anything will be quick, with each facility capable of generating 200 megawatts of electricity. The solar reserve projects are large-scale utility projects, so you're talking a six to seven hundred million dollar capital cost, about a two to two and a half year construction process would generate about 500 jobs in construction. Our first projects are expected to go into construction in mid to late 2010 with commercial operation dates um, in late 2012 and into 2013. With or without storage capacity, commercial orders for this next generation of solar energy are beginning to come in. So we are bringing a technology to market and getting it deployed as rapidly as possible. We have plans in the future to expand into storage, but right now we're finding that you know, we can sell thousands of megawatts of this technology without storage incorporated. 
E Solar recently signed an agreement to build a series of plants over the next decade in China. With a total capacity of 2,000 megawatts, this is one of the largest renewable energy deals of its kind. Other hotspots for solar tower technology are southern Europe, North Africa, India and the Middle East. But the question remains whether this technology can work on a large scale. I think you can prove it uh, you know, at a smaller scale, you can prove it from analytical equations and all that, but really the proof of the pudding is to actually get it out there in a large scale and see if it actually is economical. And with the cost of solar energy currently as much as five times higher than fossil fuel sources, it will need to be economical for this technology to keep on shining.